Well, what's your dad like? What do you mean? He would call up and say, why, why did why you not tell me about this before? He'd pull up to my house, ask me to come outside and probably punch me. <laughs> my name is Slava. I'm from southwest Russia, but I, from Siberia, from Omsk. I was christened as a Russian Orthodox person. I went to church maybe once or twice. So the first time for my christening, the second time, I can't really remember why I went there. Then by the time I reached the UK, I was, I think I was a Protestant Christian by then. I was on the, you know, church services committee at school and singing in the choir and everything else. The thing that attracted me most to Islam, and I repeat this time and time again because everybody asks me the same question, is that it makes sense. Not only overall, but at that specific point in time, it just made perfect sense to me. It wasn't the most pleasant of times, even though times were actually good, you know, I went through different financial stages of my family going through life. And at that point in time, it was probably at its peak. It was the highest time, you know, things were, things were good. But it was also the worst time for me looking back. And it got to a stage in life where I just thought, this is not possible. I just cannot keep doing this time and time again, night after night, you know, my studies were slipping, everything else was just, it was just going backwards. Being in London around that time, it was 2005, 2006-ish, so you know, it was after the London terror attacks and obviously the 2001 events, it was, the media was savage about Islam generally. And I knew for a fact that that just, it simply cannot be. You know, you cannot be uh, painted in such a picture where you have you know, the complete extreme. So it's only extreme here or extreme there. It, it's got to be somewhere in the middle. I'm quite a stubborn guy. And when somebody says, don't do something, I find 99 ways of trying to prove them wrong. So I sat down and I wanted to find out what the religion was actually about. What I found most interesting is that there was never really pressure to, to become Muslim. It was just a whole lot of information being thrown at you. So from, from, from trying to experience Ramadan, I actually thought I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to have a, you know, a, a test drive if you want. And it became just a period of complete tranquility. I was so relaxed. Yeah, I was hungry, I was tired, but I was just completely relaxed and I was at peace with myself. And looking back, that's what nothing else in this world can, can plug that gap. I was at the, the London Central Mosque and I was looking for a person to say, well, how, how do I join this? How, how do I do this? So I did. I, I, can't, I can't really describe the feeling of it. As the years go on, the best feeling I could think of to describe that moment is just gratitude, that I was actually put down on the right path, and that all of the concerns that I've had, they've just, they've not really materialized. My biggest concern back then was how will my parents take it? How will my friends take it? How, do, how will everybody that I know including my roommate at the time, who was actually one of the biggest opponents of me joining Islam. How would he take it? All of the friends that I've had previously who, who found out about it, the real ones stayed. The flaky ones that I was concerned about, well, they flaked off. What I'm concerned about now is that, what if my friends you know, find out that I'm doing this charitable work? Or what will people think of, of me when I'm spending so much time in the mosque? Or, you know, you know a lot of people ask, well, why you, know, you have why, why, why Islam? And I say, well, how can you deny something by way of religion where you give, and the more you give, the better you feel? You, know, you find yourself in things where you think, God, I would have never done this five years ago. Now that I've accepted Islam, I have a clear structure, I have a clear guideline. Nine years ago when I accepted Islam, there wasn't half of the things that we have now. You know, every morning I wake up and there is, there's some Islamic news on my phone because it's just set as an update. If I have some free time, I'll download a, a podcast of, um, of an Islamic scholar. And it's, it's just fantastic. There's so much knowledge around you. All you have to do is focus on it. Find yourself a person who you consider to be a friend. Open up to them and tell them, look, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm very worried. I'm, if you feel comfortable, say, I'm afraid. And believe me, they will come to your aid more times than you could possibly think. They will always be there to guide you and they will fight your corner because they don't even realize that you have these difficulties. They want to help you. Remember, if you, if you get somebody to accept Islam and you are their door to Islam, you get so many good deeds, so I bet there will be people fighting a corner every step of the way.